Today, I just will, would like to talk a little bit about the best practices and uh, approach we are following in order to support many, uh, in order to support Eve, uh, build and distribute across uh, multiple platforms, but with a focus on ARM. So I just would like to go through some a very brief introduction and talk about a little bit about the Eve project how we build Eve and then jump uh, into to how we manage its stuff and uh, on ARM, how Eve works on ARM, our build system, the ARM devices that we supported so far, some upcoming devices as well. So I think, well, when we talked about the channels at the end, when we we're talking about edge computing, there are a lot of big challenges uh, to solve, uh, in, especially in, in respect to security. like. We don't have guarantees about the network security. Uh, when you talk about some data center, we are talking about very much more controlled environment. So we do have control over your network internally, your uh, infrastructure. We don't have these things, or mainly we don't have these things on the edge. So we have no guarantees at all, like about uh, physical security, about the network security. We have a very uh, different uh, diversity of different, of infrastructures uh, on the edge, a mixture of remote device. Uh, there is a, to not talk about like the plethora of apps to orchestrate, to deploy, to configure, to update. So this is really complicated, right? And uh, you must be able to integrate with a lot of different, man, several, several clouds, several types of uh, cloud systems. We need to scale and we need to provide scalability and automation as well. So there's a huge number uh, of edge devices out there. They are uh, usually uh, geographically uh, dis dispersed. And uh, when we talk about devices, for instance, Industry 4.0, uh, these devices, once they are deployed in the field, they stay there for several years. So we must support a long maintenance lifetime. Uh, like for seven years more, um, to, get an, uh, to give an example. And we also need to count with uh, one, uh, one, uh, sorry, one reliable connectivity. So there are network outages, the latest expensive bandwidth. So uh, we might not even be able to control all this stuff on the edge. So any edge system must take care uh, of all these uh, challenges. And they can be solved with edge virtualization, right? So I don't want to go through this whole infrastructure. And these are the many projects, all the projects under the umbrella of LF Edge. But I would like to, to bring this slide here to explain exactly where Eve is located on it, where Eve is located in the software stack. So Eve uh, acts just on top of the hardware. So Eve is the operating system running bare metal on top of the hardware and provide the virtualization environment for the applications. But more than that, it communicates with some controller uh, on the cloud and allows the orchestration of this application. So it provides uh, a common environment for that. So when you're talking about Eve OS, uh, the project Eve, Eve stands for Eve is Agile Virtualization Engine. It's a LF Edge project, so it's currently on stage two, the growth stage. And Eve project provides the Eve OS. Eve OS is uh, a Linux-based uh, operating system for distributed edge computing. Uh, it's distributed under the Apache uh, license 2.0, so it's open source. And uh, Eve provides a common system base, like for many different platforms. So what we want to do it's take care of the, the harder complexity. So Eve wants to decouple all these applications for the hardware. Applications should not care about which kind of controllers do you have in your hardware, about uh, your the resources that manage the resources. So the goal actually is to provide this abstractor platform for applications by using virtualization, right? So Eve provides this standard API that allows us to make the use, allows applications to make the use uh, of the resources in a much more efficient uh, way. So it can also uh, partition the hardware, the resources, and uh, 
in order to increase these these workload consolidations. So, so Eve wants to provide to applications this common environment uh, by using virtualization, and that allows uh, the total control of these remote devices, the total control of the edge device, with reliability and with secure. So basically, the architecture for Eve. Eve is, as I said, it's based on on Linux. So we do use Linux kernel. So it it runs. Uh, it uses uh, virtualization, so it supports different hypervisors. Uh, by default, we use KVM, but it will also support uh, Zen and Akron as well. So it, it relies, it can change the hypervisor underneath. If it's implemented like using some microservices uh, running through the container D, and uh, it has two partitions to ensure that if we're going to update, we should be able to do the rollback if something goes wrong. And the other, uh, the rest of the disk is used for these uh, workloads for the edge applications uh, and everything else. So basically, if it runs on top of the hardware, uh, it, it implements these microservices uh, using containerd. So we do uh, run our microservices as containers as well, guarantee the fully uh, isolation between them as well. And basically, if you can spoil these uh, virtual machines, these edge applications, edge applications, they can be virtual machines or they can be containers as well. And it does that by providing a very standard uh, API that can be uh, accessed through the controller, uh, the controller on the cloud. And it's an open API. So what actually are the micro components of Eve, right? So we we based our build system and our root FS generation using Docker and Linux Git. Uh, so we use Linux Git to generate uh, the root FS uh, of the operating systems and with the tools that we need. We use Docker to containerize all the two chains, the compilers that we use. So we want to minimize uh, the dependencies, the software dependencies that the user uh, needs to install on its host system to build Eve, to test Eve, and to run Eve. Uh, we also depend on many uh, softwares that we need to install in our system. And to do that, we use uh, Alpine uh, as our package manager. So we try to shrink as much as we can our image, our image, our fi final image. So we try to keep our system as as minimal as possible. As I said, our microservices they run as containers and they are written in GoLang, and they, we don't rely on any system manager. That means we don't use System D or System Five. So we could say that. Eve is a kind of uh, Linux distribution, but it's really customized and it's really uh, shrinked to be uh, minimal and be able to run in the, across multiple platforms and these across uh, many different devices. So everything is controlled by our microservices and uh, we use a custom uh, version of the Linux kernel. We try to not change that much, but uh, for some specific platforms, especially for ARM, that we are interested in uh, here today to talk about it. Uh, some drivers, they are not full upstream it. So yeah, we need to patch a bit, but we base it on, uh, we base it our kernel, the mainline kernel. And on top of this kernel, we just apply uh, a few uh, patches and uh, a bit more other patches for, for specific platforms like for ARM. And we also maintain our bootloader, uh, mainly like we just use U-boot and, and Grub also custom because we need to include some uh, features that are not upstream yet. And uh, as I said before, like we we, ba we are based on like KVM mainly as our default hypervisor, but it also support uh, other hypervisors as well, like Zen and Akron so, so far. So what are the advantages of keep these maker components? Like I know uh, sometimes, oh, if you're relying only on Docker containers, this can consume a lot of disk space, for instance. But this is, at the other hand, we can provide a very uh, consistent uh, while building the system, generate our images. So as advantages, we can keep the total control over the running systems, like we don't need to leave uh, uh, with this any system manager. We keep the control by ourselves, by our microservices. 
and we can guarantee consistency over the build system. So we don't care uh, that much about the host system of the user because we are providing our two chains. We are providing our cross, our cross compilers uh, through the Docker containers. So this uh, makes easy to reproduce the issues to give uh, support from our side as well. But of course, it comes with some drawbacks, right? So we need uh, we need to control everything since we're taking this full control. And uh, yeah, it might be tricky to integrate to some custom board support packages. So it might be tricky if we want to integrate EVE with some another uh, custom kernel with different drivers for specific platforms. And this is might be uh, tricky to integrate with ARM devices, right? So if it's distributed uh, with binary images, can be distributed through binary images, we support like x86, uh, AMD64, ARM64, and also uh, we do support RISC-V. We provide uh, images for RISC-V. And talking about the x86 environments, uh, when we uh, see these edge devices, x86 edge devices, they are pretty much based on PC platform. So they do have some BIOS that allow us uh, to, uh, that provide us some unified uh, boot method like UFI, especially UFI. So we don't have any troubles to provide a single image and to boot our images on these machines. And the peripherals, uh, they are usually uh, connected through the PCIe bus. So we, they can be easily discovery and they can, they can be passed through to the VMs. In this way, generate a generic image which which is able to support multiple devices is not that hard so we can provide a single image with all the drivers enabled in the kernel uh, as modules and these single image can support a lot of uh, uh, different devices however for embedded senses this is not true unfortunately because we have many different methods, uh, many different uh, wrong codes, uh, the way that the SOC boots uh, the software, uh, especially on ARM, that might require a customized boot loader. So the, the timings for the, the RAM, for the DDR uh, modules, they are usually inserted uh, inside a U-boot, inside a boot loader. So we cannot use the same single image to multiple across multiple devices, for instance, on ARM. So these require uh, require us to customize this this these images. So Eve must be able to handle these different platforms. You see the problem that we got now. Uh, we want to keep as uh, uniform as possible and at the same time support. Uh, all these different platforms, these different architectures, right? Because we really want to make easy to deploy Eve, to install Eve, and uh, let uh, those edge devices ready to go, right? So it can be built from different platforms as well, from different host platforms. So it can be built from an x86 machine, it can be built for the ARM machine. And this is particularly special nowadays with the, the rise of the MacBooks, for instance, with M1, M2, which, is, which, is, which are our architectures. So we must be able to provide this environment for build, for testing and for run if also from ARM, from uh, x86 or other platforms. So we must follow good practices and approaches. Uh, we must take them into account to avoid uh, any problems and to keep the consistency uh, of our image, right? And is there any tool that maybe fits to all these requirements? Oh, well, guess what? Yeah, we have containers that could do that, right? So how do we uh, generate images for Eve? Uh, we are, although we are based on Docker, we are based on Linux Kit, we also use make files. So keep as simple as possible, keep really simple to generate these images. So if I want to generate, if I want to test Eve, I can just generate a live image and run, uh, run it using QEM, right? So in order to do that, I just need to hit make. Uh, the ZArch and HV parameters, they are optional here because by default it's MD64 and KVM. Unless you want to generate for ARM, then I will show a bit later then you, can, you need to specify. But in a nutshell, if you want to test Eve, you just need to, you just need to fetch uh, from our repo at GitHub, hit the make, 
make live, make live run, and that's it. You should be able to come up with some instance, if instance running on QMO, and you can deploy your virtual device uh, to, to, to a controller, right? So, if on ARM, well, there are billions of devices nowadays running on ARM chip. There are hundreds of manufacturers because ARM, it, it doesn't differ from x86 only in the in the instruction set, right? Because ARM is actually uh, only the instruction set, let's say, uh, simplify in this way. But the SOCs, they're really vendor specific, uh, un, let's say unlike x86, right? So inside each ARM SOC, we have many different controllers. Uh, we have many different devices and features. Uh, we might have very different uh, uh, structures uh, on the SOCs, like in terms of cores inside. So we might have multiple microprocessors inside the same SOC. This is very common nowadays. Uh, you can get like different ARM cores inside the same chip, like Cortex A and Cortex M. You might have uh, different coprocessors, like video processor units, uh, neural processor units, right? And some of these CPUs, they might not implement the full ARM architecture, the full ARM uh, instruction set. Uh, like they can uh, lack some uh, extensions, like the trust zone for security. So we must handle with all these uh, different SOCs. So how we could in this way uh, try to produce a, a image that it's able to run on all these different platforms, all these different SOCs. So, well, guess what? We can still use uh, containers to build Eve, but at least for ARM, we do support cross compilation, right? So it makes more easy for generating an ARM image from an x86 host you can still uh, use cross compilation and the good thing is that you don't need to set up nothing you just need to fetch uh, eve and uh, since we're based uh, on docker we are going to fetch all the containers we are going to fetch all the cross uh, compilers the two chains and this is going to be generated uh, uh, flawlessly like tr in a transparent way right so for ARM, how do we generate uh, EVE images in this case? Well, it's pretty much exactly the same as x86 because this is our goal, actually. We want to keep uh, the same, uh, the uniform uh, uh, process as much as possible, right? So as I said, the same way we just use make, but now we just specify as a, a Z arch, we specify this ARM64. We can also change we can, uh, between the hypervisors, but it's still some platforms, uh, they really require some customized images. Like some platforms, they put the bootloader in some different offset uh, in our image. So in order to support that, uh, we need to uh, come up with some additional argument in our build system, for instance, right? So we do support this platform um, parameter that you can test to generate uh, Eve OS images specifically for some device. So as an example, we support uh, ARM from, uh, with uh, SOC from IMX, IMX8 MP, uh, from, from NXP, this SOC. And uh, we do support uh, a couple of devices uh, from this platform. And if I want to generate Eve OS image to be deployed on this device. This device, for instance, the, the last one is the Divantech. So I want to generate uh, an Eve image for that particular device. That's pretty simple. I don't change the way I built Eve. So I built exactly as I built for x86, but in this case, I will pass in the platform uh, parameter. I, I will build for a specific for this platform. The final image that I got uh, in my SD card or USB stick, I can deploy it to this device and that's it. The key point here is that the whole environment provided by EVE will be exactly the same, no matter if I'm running uh, on x86, on RISC 5 or ARM64, right? So what are the ARM, that officially ARM devices that we do support uh, on EVE OS? Well, we do support Raspberry Pi uh, for the Model B, to be more specific. 
Uh, in this platform, we also support an Advent Tech. Uh, it's a hat, actually, it's a Raspberry industrial hat that you can put all together uh, in an industrial device. The IMX 8M platform, we support three different devices. The Advent Tech EPC uh, R3720, the development board, uh, uh, board Pulux is from a company called FuTech from Germany. And we do support also uh, a, a, another SOC of the, the same family, uh, the IMX8MQ uh, through this evaluation kit board. We also support, we do have support for the Rock Chip uh, RK3399. Uh, and of course, we do support also virtualizing the environment. We do support QAMO. Uh, we do support High Keyboard and Jetson Nano. These uh, devices that are officially supporting the SS, they have the drivers that they need to run. We can generate the images specifically for these devices and we can run EVOS uh, on this device. And of course, EVOS was tested as well on these devices, right? For the Raspberry Pi, we also support uh, some TPM chip. Uh, the SOB 9670 that we can connect uh, on the Raspberry. We do, we do have support for that because Eve relies on the TPM functionality to, to, to do some key management and certificate stuff, right? For the IMX8M, we support pretty much the whole hardware uh, and peripherals controllers from this platform. We do support USB the PCIe, the Ethernet, HDMI, CAN bus, uh, the EMC, also the hard TPM present on both uh, of these devices and LED as well, because uh, on, on these embedded, especially embedded devices, uh, we don't have, uh, we are not that common to connect a monitor to it, for instance, right? So Eve can also use an LED to give some status about uh, onboarding process, about uh, edge applications that are running or not, errors or, and everything else. And one very nice thing about this platform, we officially support Trust Zone. So uh, we do have support on, on EVOS and we deploy the OptoS. OptoS is a trusted OS uh, that runs on the Trust Zone. A trust Zone, for those who are not familiar with, it's an ARM extension. And the Trust Zone just created a new execution level. So in these new execution levels, you can run uh, completely isolated, even from the hypervisor. We can run this. Uh, we can run these trusted applications in in a crypto way, secure it. You know, and there is. Uh, uh, another execution level called EL3 to be more specific. And this, uh, this execution level is meant to, to run a security monitor. And this security monitor is the one that is going to spoil uh, the hypervisor, the, the, the normal world, what is uh, the way they call it, and the secure environment, like with the trust OS. So we pretty much we have another operating system running, uh, the secure OS with two different execution levels, but now secure in the secure world, like the user space from the secure world, the kernel space from the, the secure world. And we do support that. Uh, just a common example, uh, DRM systems, like I think I can uh, mention here, like Netflix, Netflix use this kind of technology uh, to, to provide their DRM stuff. And uh, we do support that on Eve. So we have a client drivers for the, FTPM, which is a software implementation of the TPM that can run on Trust Zone. We provide a pair of RSA keys because uh, OptoS comes with the public key and this key will be used to verify and load only authorized uh, trust applications. Of course, the key pair that we provide is just for example, uh, it's present in our build system, but can be very easily replaced with the uh, customer uh, user uh, key pair, right? So when we deploy EVOS on this particular platform, that means we should get automatically, right? The OptoS running, EVOS running, and if the user want, it can build and deploy uh, their their trust applications uh, on, on directly uh, or on EVOS. 
For the time being, we don't provide any trusted application. We let to the user uh, to, to make, to develop uh, their own trusted application that they want. But yeah, but the whole infrastructure is there. Uh, the, op the secure OS, the Opt OS is there, it's running, so it can be, be used. All right, so we do support like uh, all these other boards, like the Jetson Nano and uh, EVOS. We don't have the full support yet for all the drivers on Jetson Nano, but EVOS can run, can be deployed. And for the high keyboard, currently uh, the development is not that very active, mainly due to the short age of these boards. So that's why we are not getting uh, too much development. Uh, on this platform, but yeah, we still, we do support, we can run it. And these are the upcoming devices we are working on uh, it. So the NVIDIA Jetson X here uh, and X platform uh, through these two devices, so the Lenovo Think Edge SE7, we are working, porting our patches, customize uh, their uh, custom, NV the custom NVIDIA scanner, we are, we are putting our patches on top of it to run uh, EVE. Uh, we have already a version, a test version running on this device with the full support for the, the peripherals like USB, uh, EMMC, you know. And as I said, like we can generate the image, just put on the USB stick, boot the device and deploy EVE. We, if you uh, start the installation process automatically and you deploy and will be ready to be onboarded to some uh, cloud controller because that, that's how it works. Like the onboard process, you uh, register your device to your uh, remote controller and then that's it. You can, as soon uh, as you did that, you can deploy your edge applications, you can deploy containers, VMs, uh, you can create your entire, an entire virtual net network uh, by using Eve. Uh, just to to sit here, uh, some of the our features, right? And we also support the developer kit because we think that's important for developers. So they should be able to get a platform where they can run, they can run Eve, they can develop uh, Eve. That's why we think it's important to support also not only the edge devices, the, full, the production edge devices, but we think it's important to also support these uh, developer kits uh, to, to allow, uh, to help uh, and speed up the development as well, right? So uh, the, key, the key takeaways for this presentation is basically like uh, we, the approaches that we are following uh, the practice that we are taking in, into an account to try to keep EVE uh, very uniform across different platforms, especially on ARM, where we have this diversity of SOCs of different manufacturers, different features. So EVE uses a common build system, which is based on Docker and Linux Kit. Well, it's complex, yes, it is, but uh, we do support different platforms it requires a minimal dependency on the host machine. So we don't want to rely uh, on many software stacks or features uh, from the host machine. It, it, it does support like cross compilation. We can, we can uh, do cross compilation. And this is really important because uh, when you don't have cross compilation, you can still build for a different architecture, especially using Docker, but there is no other way. You need to use the binary emulation to do that. And then this can be, this generates a lot of overhead. So if we're going to build a full image without cross compilation support, like being a different host machine, let's say I'm on an x86 and I want to build ARM, uh, ARM target machine uh, image, or the other way around, I am on a MacBook with ARM architecture and I want to build x86 uh, image, EVOS image. So it can take a lot of time. Right. Even though you, you are using a very uh, good machine, very powerful machine, still you need to emulate uh, that architecture that you're running the compiler. By using cross compilation, we can uh, speed up a lot because we are running uh, natively the compiler in the host, the compiler but generate uh, for the target uh, architecture, right? So. The good thing is that Eve provides this consistency uh, between different hosts and target platforms. 
So you should expect the same environment. You should expect the same microservices uh, on, on those different platforms, right? And uh, ARM images, they can be provided as well for specific platforms because, of course, since we do have these different hardware, different controllers, different features uh, on these SOCs, we must be able somehow to, to also provide support for that. And sometimes there is no other way. We need to change the layout of our image to be able to boot in some particular device. But we can do that. EVOS also supports that. And uh, we can build and make the deployment uh, of EVE and in a uniform way across all these, these platforms, right? So that's the, the approaches that we are doing, the goals that, and uh, the practice that we are following uh, during the, the EVE development. And I think that's it. I just uh, would like to finalize, finalize with a call out for collaboration. So just let's make our community grow. Just come join to us uh, if it's completely open source. It's available on GitHub. We have our project page. We have our week, our main list. We do regular Zoom calls and we are available on Slack as well. So come talk to us, join us, uh, any questions that you have, any help that you need to deploy EVE on your device, to port EVE to our device, we will be very happy to, to help. And there's also this roadmap uh, week page uh, about our futures and, and the future of the project. And that's it. So that's what I've got today. And thanks for, for watching. Questions? Yep. Well, currently mailing x86. Uh, okay, so uh, what is the, the, the common environment that you see the deployment of EVE uh, currently? Currently mainly x86, mainly those industrial and PC, PC-based computers. But we have seen more interest from, from different companies on ARM, especially on ARM. Uh, Risk v not that much, to be honest, but it's on ARM, especially if these new very powerful devices uh, like the, uh, the Jetson architecture with the video uh, process, uh, the GPU stuff. Uh, and that's why we are investing more on ARM as well. But mainly, mainly PC, industrial PC based computers. Yeah. But of course, when we go to more to the IoT field, let's say, then this thing changes. Then we see more ARM devices than x86. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's it. Thank you, Renee. Thank you.